Good morning, folks. Today we've got some space weather, earth weather, earthquake outlook, a peek back at 2014, and I guess much, much further into the past as well. We begin, as always, over at spaceweathernews.com. We find the last 24 hours on our star via 193 angstroms, slight popping activity around the limbs, but certainly nothing facing Earth. The pops you could see were not really able to move the X-ray flux. They were shift-like in nature rather than eruptive, and were in low B range for flaring. The Earth-facing umbral fields connect to plague, so no sunspots face Earth directly, but we do have a fairly complex grouping that looks to be potentially entering our view now on the left. Solar wind here. No question the second half of these coronal hole streams are a bit more robust, almost hit 700 kilometers per second, and we indeed got a geomagnetic storm this morning. Luckily just level 1, but had it been worse, it's nice to once again see that the Disaster Prediction app is the fastest solar storm reporter in the world. When we come now to 211 angstroms, we see a couple of the smaller coronal holes beginning to exit the disk. Appears we have one turning in on the north as well. Let's quickly come now to the Blot Echo wind map. We can see the location of the past 72 hours Blot events. A couple in Japan, if they happen today, could steal an alert from somewhere else. Article today is not the top story, but it leads us there. Mike Lockwood, ever the two-way street, he's pretty sure the sun is going to sleep, but that it won't affect climate change and certainly won't stop it. Well, if you actually go and look at the chart posted comparing sunspots at the top to temperature and volcanic events at the bottom, you can begin to see the correlations between them, especially in the weak sun volcano eruptions about which John Casey has numerous publications. I'd argue that your eyes say more than the math when it comes to those charts, but I'd also like to ask the good doctor to recall that the primary shifts with grand solar minima are in the NAO, the polar vortices, the effect of the QBO, NAM, SAM, Arctic oscillations, and the monsoon flows, which is why we were able to compile this list about the last minimum, which we posted on YouTube in 2014. Check it out. In the 1630s, two million people died due to famine in India. Beginning in the late 1640s, huge portions of Europe developed famines. In the early 1660s, India went two full years without a single drop of rain. 1680. Famine killed 80,000 people in Sardinia. The famine of the 1690s killed 15% of the population of Scotland. Two million dead in France during that same period. Later in the decade, more than 100,000 people died in Sweden and Estonia. And at the turn of the century, two million more people died due to famine in India. Just a few years later, Eastern Prussia lost 40% of its population to famine. So that's uh, wonderful. Anyway, northern polar vortex is broken down for the spring. You'll recall she prefers the cold, and so as fall and winter get on in the southern hemisphere, we already see her arrived and unpacking her bags. Coming to the U.S., where that central low will pull storms along its southern convergence tonight with freezing rain and snow possible on the northern line of it. Also got a good spot of concern in eastern Oceania with three storms bearing down on region set to encroach on the Kermadec and Tongan trenches. Folks, we've got day two of observing the frontier today. Website members, be sure to catch up with this week's Fly on the Wall stand-in page and be sure to post any questions you think you'll need to get caught up. We've got the rest of the pressure and radar forecasts around the world, followed by shots of our star to close. It's 4.55 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.